Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from Tea Dottles. Today, I'm going to do my, well, I won't say it's my final review, but I have done a knit and crochet swatch for the rest of the yarn I got in that yarn haul from Lion Brand. Um, so, I have one more project to show you that I finished with one of the yarns, which you've already seen if you watch my podcast, and one in, in progress which as well, I've shown my podcast already, but I'll talk a little bit more about working with the yarn in this review. So this is a review of different uh, yarns I purchased and uh, well, it was really two purchases on the linebrand.com um, because I know that not all of them are sold in the stores. Um, at least uh, there's some of them that I have seen since I did this but they weren't in my Walmart when I purchased them. So, uh, so what I'm doing is doing a four by four knit and crochet swatch with each yarn. Um, so I can learn more about the yarn and see if I get gauge. And, um, then I'm going to make a project with each of the yarns so I can learn even more about the yarn because just making the swatch gives you some useful information about your tension with the yarn. But making an actual project lets me get down into the rest of this, the rest of the skein or hank or uh, cake or whatever, and, and see, you know, if there are knots in the yarn, uh, if I have issues with tangling. Um, I do pull out my stitches on my swatches as we do the review. But um, when you work, actually work with it, in a project it, it, it's a little different so it's important to me to do that so that I can tell you even more information about the yarn so um <clears throat> and I did purchase all of this yarn with my own money it's not something Lion Brand paid me to do I am a Lion Brand affiliate so my links to Lion Brand down below will be affiliate links um that just means I receive a percentage of the purchase should you purchase through my link, um, does not change your price in any way. It's kind of like I'm advertising, but I don't get paid unless you buy something. <laughs> so that's the way I look at affiliate links. Um, so first I'm going to show you my finished object and my work in progress with the yarns I showed in the last review. This is the fourth one. I am going to do a blog post tomorrow with all the information I've gathered about this yarn. In the blog post so there'll be one uh, place for you to go and look at information about the yarn um, and then I'll probably do a second blog post and I'll be showing you as I go along my podcast and things the projects that I work on um, I don't think I'll do another I may do a one final roundup once I complete all the projects and do a video about it um, but that may be a little bit coming so but there will be the blog post so you can Look at all this information that I've written down in my notebook as I've done this and um, see the things I have made. I have completed a few projects that I've already showed. I'm not going to show those again. Um, and then uh, it just be a good place for you to go to uh, find out more information about these yarns if you want to because sometimes uh, it's different when someone makes things with it. I know several of these yarns, they don't have any patterns currently on line brand a lot of their yarns have free patterns that you can go check out but several of these do not currently have any free patterns for them so all right let's just get into it shall we all right so the first finished object is this and if you watch my podcast you've seen it this is made with the mako cotton yarn you just look at my notes um, this is super soft yarn and I really want me a nice squishy sweater out of it. I loved crocheting with it. Um, it's $5.99 a skein. Mako cotton is a longer, hold on. Is Mako, Mako cotton is the same as Egyptian cotton. I think that's correct. So it's a longer staple cotton grown in Egypt. And then there's Pima cotton, which is a longer staple cotton a longer fiber cotton, I should say, that's actually grown here in the U.S. But it's higher quality and it's coveted for its longer fibers. Um, so this is a pattern that actually is on my website called the Broken Rose Cowl. 
I made it up so I could use this one skein of yarn that I had uh, because I, for some reason I only bought one of these. Most of them if they had small quantity in the skein. I bought at least two. I only bought one of these for some reason. So, uh, but this pattern is on my website for free. Um, like I said, uh, I did enjoy using this yarn. One thing I will say, this had a knot in it. These are small skeins of yarn. Let's see. If y'all hear a saw, my neighbor is working on a porch next door. So, sorry about that. Now my dog's growling at him. Okay. So, <laughs> I didn't, ha I don't have that. Okay. It's a hundred, it's only 125 yards in this skein. Okay. And it's five ninety nine dollars a skein, regular price. Um, to have a knot in there, that, that seems too much. And it was kind of towards the end. So, I had that problem with the merino not the merino camel the chainette which is also was a higher priced yarn um at 8.99 a skein for 131 yards um yeah so i don't i don't think there should be knots in that small of a skein and especially a pricier yarn that way so that's a concerning to me now i do intend to buy <laughs> A bigger quantity of this and make me a sweater or something of that nature because I really want one because it's it's so very soft and fluffy but and if whenever I do that I will see if that's something that happens in every skein or if I just got the bump look I just put that piece of fuzz in my hair and I took off my hair okay <laughs> So, I will let y'all know if, if that seems to be a problem in every skein. I don't know. I do love the yarn. I love the softness of it. For a cotton, it's very, very nice to work with. Um, I don't have it down, the fiber down on this one. I don't have my label. I'm, I'm pretty sure this was not 100% cotton. I think it was mostly cotton and something else. But, I don't have my label with me. So, that is another finished project with the yarns I've been reviewing. Um, the next one that is in progress is with the Mandela Ombre. I'm doing a knitting project with this one. Uh, I super love this yarn. It's very soft. It's nice to work with. It doesn't split. Um, this is going to be a scarf. And I just did, I was learning how to do the seed stitch, which is very tedious, but I love the texture. Um, so I just did a couple of panels down here and then I'm just going to do, uh, what is that? The snuck, stuck in it? Are you knitting pearl? I think all the way up. So, um, I really like the definition you get in your stitches with this yarn. Um, yeah, I, I do. I really like this yarn. So, so far, um, and I have, it's going to be a very big scarf, I think. Because on the side, does this one show? No. This one doesn't give whether it'll make, what it'll make on the side. So, that is the one in progress. And we'll see how long it gets when I get finished. <laughs> Which will be a little bit because it's knitting and I'm much slower at knitting. Okay, now let's take a look at the, the, the final review. I have one, two, three, eight more yarns in this review because I've it's been so long since I did my last review I got them all fixed okay so I'm gonna start at one start with this because it's not attached to my little cable over here um this is amazing lace I actually got three colors of this because I had a project in mind with it um amazing lace come on is that my camera will not adjust by itself there we go this is although it says lace it is a number one super fine actual lace weight yarn is a zero this is 70 percent acrylic and 30 percent nylon it is a very soft yarn it has a little bit of a halo on it you can see up here just a little bit and i got it in lattice blue 
mesh, sage, and eggplant trellis, which I think look great together. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and say that my samples are not a full 4x4. Four four. It's a very small yarn, and I didn't feel like making a whole 4x4 four four swatch of it. So, with the crochet, I got about halfway, okay? Plus, this calls for a 2.25 millimeter hook, or a B1. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but sometimes you can get a B1 and a 2.5, and sometimes you can get it in a 2.25. I do have a 2.25, but it was a metal hook, and I didn't want to use it, so I used a 2.5. So, my swatch came out just a little bit bigger. It's 4.75 wide, but I did get gauge on this. This is two inches for half the stitches because um, the stitches were 33 and I did half so I did did I do half I don't think I even did half hold on one because I did double crochets two four six eight ten twelve thirteen so that is not half <laughs> That is because it's 33 rows. So I did tw uh, 18. Well, what is half? 32. 16 would be half. 16 and a half. So I did 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 and a half. So I got 2 inches and 12 and a half. But like I said, I did a slightly bigger hook. So it may have gotten gauge if um, I had a bigger hook. A smaller hook. Yeah, but I don't think so because my knitting needles, I actually used a smaller knitting needle because I didn't have that size. And I still, it came out a little bigger on the width. So, yeah. This is, it's a nice yarn to work with. It's very soft. It makes a very soft fabric. I just personally don't want to work with that small of yarn for something bigger. But these things come with, these are, what did I write down? Where is it? $7.99 a skein. You get over a thousand yards on this. 1,017 yards. So it's a lot of yarn on here. Um, so here is my little knit swatch. I did an inch. Because <laughs> it was very, even worse knitting with it. I dropped a stitch right there. That's why I look so funky. But, um... I actually started doing these so they would lay a little bit straighter and that's not gonna Ooh, that's not what I wanted to happen there we go I did the standard garter on the ends and on the bottom and then I just knit 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 in between <laughs> so um it does have good stitch definition and like I said it's a very soft fabric I really like the feel of it um, it was four and a half for me on the width and I got a third a fourth of the stitches this one I did get a fourth of the stitches which would be 12 because it's 48 or rows 48 rows so I got 12 rows and it's an inch so that would be gauge um, but it was about half an inch wider even if I measure at the bottom. Uh, so that one, I used a two point, it called for a, a two or 2.75 millimeter needles, but I had a 2.5 millimeter needles. Um, so that's what I used because that's what I had. So and it didn't seem too tight to me, but it made it bigger. So that seems weird and I did measure across the bottom yeah because it's sticking out of my it's sticking out of my little gauge thing I got this is I got this in the mail yesterday today actually it's a knit gauge it has it for all the needles and it also has this which is for crochet hooks um it's a clover thing I got it off of Amazon so it's pretty cool because it's, it's the four by four part in the middle so that makes it easier to measure now let's see how easy this pulls out I got a piece of yarn in this 
Um, I think it's probably going to pull out fairly well. Um, certainly did lose my stitches easily. <laughs> but that's because I was trying to put it on something else. And that's why I dropped my stitches. It's pulling out really easy. Um, again, I will pull that out all the way later. And now let's check out the crochet one. And see how easy it pulls out. Really, really easy. It doesn't snag even at the corners. So yeah, pulls out very easily. It's a very soft yarn, like I said. Um, it has a nice feel to it. My plan is to combine these three yards, yarns, yarns, and make one project, like a big shawl or scarf out of that. That's what I plan to do with these three. Cause I can't see myself making a, cause this a thousand yards of this little yarn can make a really large project. Can't see myself making something that big with this small of a yarn. It would drive me crazy. It's too tiny. It's too tiny for me. <laughs> so next we have a soft spoken is the yarn. Um, this is a very, I'm trying not to mess things up, very fluffy yarn. And I picked the color Moonlight. It is a number five bulky. Um, and it is $14.99 a skein. Okay, so my crochet swatch. I did get gauge on it, and I did do single crochet on this. Pretty sure I did. Yeah. I got perfect gauge. Um, fairly much. If I hold it in there, it's pretty, pretty much on the dot. It's hard to hold in there, and you see. Yeah. So I did get gauge on my crochet. Um, this is a soft yarn. It's actually not as soft as the one I just showed. Um, it's, it's got a bite to it, if that makes any sense. It's, it has a, a texture to it. And that may be because, um, I believe this one, this one has wool in it. Okay, so this is 40% wool, 40% uh, polymide, and 20% acrylic. So that's where that... I can feel the wool in it. That's what I'm feeling. So it is soft, but you can def you can tell it's got wool in it. Okay. Um, now my knitting portion. I have them all on this big long cable. So let me. Well, I'm gonna try to. But my fingers don't want to hold it, so I can untwist it. There we go. It'll be okay. Now my swatch looks. Looks too small. I'm going to put it in here. So I know I had the correct size needles for it. So this is, this is pretty small. This is about, let me put it down on the table. It'll be easier for me to, I couldn't do my knitting ones because they were all, all on that cable. And that was too frustrating to do. So this is coming out about half inch too short. Even if I smoosh it out, yeah. Coming out about three and a half by three and a half. Now, let's see. It says 14 stitches and 20 rows. I'm pretty sure I got all of those. Two, three. This is really hard to count. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got 20 rows on this. I know there was one of these at least, but it's not this one that I misread it. Of course, I got my reading glasses, y'all, because... Doctor said I might need them, but they seem too potent to me sometimes when I'm looking at things. Sometimes they're helpful, but sometimes I got this, like the number ones or whatever. So, anywho. I find them helpful sometimes, but sometimes I don't. Okay, so my knitting swatch is only three and a half by three and a half, which is a lot smaller than uh that's a lot that's unusual usually my knitting swatches are 
fairly dead on and then I wonder if it's because of this floofy fabric this floofy floofy yarn all right so let's see how it pulls out this is the one that I'm kind of like is this gonna pull out okay we'll see well oh, we got a little snag right there no it pulls out fairly good on the knitting swatch oh we got a little hung up there now something I will say mm -hmm. got a little hung up there um I don't recall this yarn splitting but what it tends to do, for some reason, the fibers like each other a lot. And they like to, you see how it's wrapped around it like that. I found that if you just, and that was really off camera, but I just kind of pulled them apart. With a, and if Because if you pull on that, when it gets hung up like that, it's going to, uh, it's going to break your yarn. And you're going to be really frustrated. Come on, camera. So, and, and I was supposed to do a tutorial Tuesday. I was supposed to do a tutorial about working with those kind of yarns, but y'all, I have a, I'm kind of at the tail end of a cold to cold earlier, and yesterday I had to stay home from work, so that's why that didn't happen. But, anywho, let's say about the crochet. Crochet stitches are a little bit different than knitting. It didn't hang up on the knitting though, so. All right. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not hanging up as more, as much. I can't tell. Well, oh, there's a little snag there. So, so you, you could potentially have issues with this. So with when you have yarns like this and you have to frog something, don't go yanking, yanking, yanking. Do it slowly, and if you get to a place, usually you can finagle it out um just don't because that's that's gonna um break your yarn and you're gonna be frustrated so so that yarn it frogs okay i did have a couple of snags but nothing i couldn't get out so it's not too bad um like i said it is soft but crocheted up i can feel more of that wool in it than you can on the skein okay so there is soft spoken. Next, I have, I have to move this out of the way. I have the mandala, thick and quick. This is pocket watch. You see on the side. Love this colorway. It's very pretty. Got little fuzzles on everything. Okay. So this is a number six super bulky yarn. Okay. Um, it says one of this will make a hat. It's 100% acrylic. It is I'm working with the mandalas. You know how they, they're a denser yarn. They have a higher twist on it. This is very much like that. Although you can see the twist. In it. So it's not quite as... It's a dense yarn to, to crochet or knit with. I will say that the knit fabric or the crochet fabric, which is what this is, it's very stiff, okay? I use single crochet on this, and, and it's, you see how stiff it is. It's holding that little band to itself. Um, let me put it in my, my little swatch thing here. I haven't done all of these. Okay, so this one is slightly more than four inches on the stitches. Not that much, and it's, it's about half inch short on the rows. So, so I got the four inches on the, um, the stitches and three and a half on the rows. So, I, I feel like these stitches are really tight, but it's because of the yarn. And I did use the, uh, yeah, I used a P 10 millimeter hook, but I want to say that sometimes when you get a size P 15, it'll say nine millimeters and sometimes it'll say 10 millimeters because I had that issue with one, one of the other yarns and I can't remember which other one had that same. Maybe I'm thinking about something else. Okay. Anywho. Here is, I have two skeins of this. 
for some reason. Because you're supposed to be able to make a hat out of this. Here is my knit swatch. It's got more stretch. The knit stitches definitely give this yarn more stretch. Especially with the... Uh, what is that? It's, that's stockinette. It's, is it stockinette? I always get the two confused. Anyway, I did the knit. I did the... The regular knit pearl on the edges and the bottom. And then I just did knits. Knit, knit, knit in the middle. So let's look at this one. This one is also... I wonder if I missed the row. This one's also half an inch short on the row. So that's interesting. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I... No. The other night when I was stitching these, before I got me some reading glasses, I used my phone to enlarge the little labels because I couldn't see them. Yeah, I couldn't see them. I'm like, what does that say? And I have a feeling I may have confused some things, but it's odd that both of these are half inch short. Um, eight rows is only seven rows. I think I got it confused because it's seven stitches, eight rows, and I think I got so that's probably why that's half inch short. So it's probably not half inch. I need to take a note of that. And then another one says eleven. Maybe I can count these. Let's see. I know I did two. Yeah, I got eleven on this, so I don't know. But let's see. This pulls out. Really easy. I didn't expect to have any troubles with this because it's such a dense yarn. Now let's check out the crochet version. Alright. It's a little bit tougher to pull out, but it's not hanging up. So, there we go for the mandala thick and quick. I really love this yarn. Um, I will probably be doing a knitting project with this. It knitted really fast because, oh, this is also the one. They call for a 9 millimeter, a size 13 or 9 millimeter knitting needles. The biggest I had was 8 millimeters. So that may be, it's, just, it's the correct width, but that may be the one of the short, it's shorter. Because um, I had a, a smaller hook, a needle. Because I didn't have a 9 millimeter at all. The biggest I had was an 8. So, that may be what that is. All right, just, just like that. I feel like I'm, I had all these notes and I feel off course already. Let's see. All right. Now, next up is a really fun yarn. I actually really like this one. Um, I like the Mandela Thick and Quick too. I just think I would prefer it in the knit version. It's a little stretchier. All right. Stitch Bird, which I really love the color. This is Purple Martin. Okay. I don't think I really liked any of the other colorways, but this one I do like. Um, it is 83% acrylic and 17% wool, which I think is what the little, it looks like it has like a netting around the yarn. That black line that goes through it is kind of crisscrossed around each piece of yarn see it better there that must be the wool to be such a small quantity um you can see the kind of pattern it changes color but within the color it gets darker and lighter it's a nice sturdy yarn it's not it's not un i wouldn't mind having it next to my skin uh let's see how it did in the gauge so it's about half inch short on the width and it's a little bit tall on the height, like maybe a quarter inch. So you can see it looks more like a rectangle than a square. So this is single crochet. So this one, uh, a little off. And I did use the correct hook on that one. So hmm, that could be just a matter of my attention. So now here is the same color. I had two of these as well. I don't know. Here's the knit version, which is a lot. Of course, I did that. What is it called? 
It's going to bug me. Uh, knit knits and the regular stitches on the outside. So I really like the pattern. You can see more of the regular knit stitches down there. Um, just knocked something off in the floor. I don't know what. Let's see. Okay, this one's right at gauge. I mean, it's pretty, pretty much dead on, guys. Dead on. I'm so fuzzy. Okay. So, I enjoyed uh, knitting and crocheting with this. Um, this is another yarn. It's a little bit stiffer with the crochet stitches, um, but it's not as stiff as that mandala thick and quick. This is a number five bulky. Um, the little thread that runs through it, occasionally I would find it catching on my hook or my needles. So something to watch for. It wasn't like constant. It was just occasionally. So let's see how it undoes. It's doing pretty good. Yeah, that's my knit swatch. Frog's pretty good. And then with my crochet. We got, yep, comes out really well. Nothing too major about that. So that is Stitch Bird, which I actually really like that. I'm looking forward to making something with that. I might make a scarf or something. I don't know. All right, what do I got next? Next, I have Turnstiles. Uh... Turnstiles. It's a number five bulky. Um, it is 48% acrylic, 34% wool, 18% polymide. Um, I don't like this yarn. I'm going to go ahead and say. <laughs> this is like crocheting with felted yarn. This is what it's like. Or knitting with felted yarn. It is super thick. And it sticks to itself very badly. You can see it looks like felted yarn. Um, how did that even do that? I have a feeling this is not going to frog very easily. But this is, you can see how it changes colors. It's like a ball of felted yarn. That's the way I feel about this yarn. Um, uh, let's see, my. This, wait, that's not great. There it is. So I got the rows, but it's about half inch short. But I think this is the one that I mixed up the, um, let's see. Yeah, I had eight stitches and nine rows. And I think I did, well, how could I have done that wrong? I don't know. It's, it's a half inch short. So I think I have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have seven stitches for some reason, so it probably would have gotten gauge if I had a, um, if I had a counted correctly. Okay, so, and the, here is my knit swatch. My knit swatch I know is not going to be right because I completely messed up the count on this. It was... 12 by 18 and I, I only did 12 rows after I did 12 stitches so it's correct for the width as far as gauge goes um and the height probably would be correct if I had a, if I had have done it correctly so now here it is a different part of the colorway so when I have one skein I do the outside for for one swatch and the inside pull for the other swatch. This was not easy to inside pull. I can say that. Most of these I can usually find the inside fairly easily. But uh, so let's see. It actually is pulling out better than I thought. But I don't know if y'all can hear. You can hear the grabbiness of it maybe. Like when you pull fibers apart, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. I don't like 
the fabric this makes at all in either knitting or crochet but I will make a project out of it there's a hat I will probably make even though I have to say that hat does not look near as fuzzy as this yarn actually is you see it just doesn't look as fuzzy as this yarn what do y'all think I don't think it does so all right now the crochet stitches I definitely would not want to crochet with this I'm just gonna say because it's it's so it's, okay you say I'm already hung up knitting stitches come out much easier but this yarn it wants to grab onto itself but it, I mean it's just yeah I'll definitely be doing a knitting project with this yarn and I doubt I will ever buy that yarn again I don't like it at all so that's my personal opinion on that yarn um it sticks to everything <laughs> it's like velcro yarn velcro yarn okay so next up is the re-up yarn uh this is a 85 percent cotton 15 percent polyester yarn um i got it actually in orange sunflower and one I actually worked on. I don't know why I didn't do a different one for knit and crochet because I had two. Was lime. Okay. Uh, this is a number four medium weight yarn. Um, uh, I compare it to peaches and cream yarn. That's what I would compare it to. It's a little bit softer than peaches and cream yarn. Okay. Um, but it's definitely a kitchen cotton. Uh, there is my little crochet swatch, which is much, it's half inch smaller. No, it's quarter inch on the width and half inch on the height. But I know that I got the correct stitches on this one. So it is a lot smaller than, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, it feels, it's a little bit, like I said, just a tad titch, maybe softer than the peaches and cream cotton, because it's got that, uh, what was it, polyamide or whatever in it, polyester in it, um, but it, it's, it's a kitchen cotton, um, then here is my knit swatch, which I'm going to measure before I show y'all, because... It's kind of going out. This one, I pretty much got gauge on this one. But you can see that it does split with the needles. Um, and those needles aren't super pointy that I used. So, you can see some places. It was a little bit splitty. You can see it coming apart at the end. Uh, but not too bad. And actually, the... Uh, knitting version is a little bit softer than the crochet which it tends to be because it's a different it's a thinner stitch than crochet is so let's let's see how this pulls out pulls out fairly well um i would say watch for splitting and if you're knitting with it i wouldn't use which if you're a knitter and you've knitted with the crochet with cotton you probably know or splitty yarn that you don't want to use pointy pointy needles because to me that makes it harder but that's me here's the crochet one comes out really well so there you go there's we hope and i will probably be making dishcloths with this for gifts for christmas so there is marie up yarn i got two more left over here they are both cotton yarns as well but I, they are very similar yarns okay so i've got the uh cotton bamboo is what it's called okay and then i've got the kobo kobo they're both um this one is 52 percent cotton and 48 cent percent rayon from bamboo and this is 50 50 the same fibers so they're very <laughs> similar yarn and i did the calculations on the price because this is 675 a skein this is 5.99 a skein 
Um, and the re-up, by the way, is $1.99, and that turnstiles was $6.49. Um, but I got these when they have sale, so. Um, so this one is .027 cents a yard, and this one is .025 cents a yard. So they're about the same price. This one has slightly more cotton in it, 2% more cotton. So... I don't understand why they have two yards that are almost as identical. Um, so, I will say they're both soft. This one is a bit, I don't know. This one, they both have different shines. They have a different sort of twist, but they're both split. I'm just going to say. You can see how that's coming apart that is the Kobo and so is the the cotton bamboo which is what it's called so here is my crochet in the cotton bamboo which looks like it's going to be wrong because it's really tall and here is my crochet in the Kobo which is actually in my Walmart now but they only have neutral shades. They don't have anything but neutral shades. So you can see I did double crochet on both of these. These are both a number three. Number three light yarn. But you can see this is much taller. Um, so this one is gauge but half inch short. One, two, three. 11, 12, 13, 14 stitches, which is what I was supposed to have. So it's it's still half inch short for me on the gauge. So the Kobu, getting tangled up downhill. The Kobu is correct on the width, but let's see, about a half inch short on the height. <laughs> so. So that's that's a little interesting, isn't it? For the same and I know I did these at the same the same night, so that's that's very interesting. So now here are the here is my big old long cable. Uh uh. Getting stuck on the end. I'm gonna leave it right there instead of fighting with it. Okay. Here's my knit swatch. This is a very nice knit fabric with these. Um, the crochet is nice. It has a little bit of drape to it. Um, like I said, it's been a nice summery top. Um, and the cotton bamboo is Snapdragon and the other one's grass green. So let's see how I did. Oh, this is correct. Eh. This is about right for the gauge, for the knitting. Um, let's see about the, here's my knit swatch. This looks way too short. Maybe this is one that I didn't knit all the way on. I don't know. Okay, I'm about five rows to shy of what I'm supposed to be, so that's why. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought I had finished it, but apparently I didn't. So it should be, let's see, four inches. It's 20 rows. So it should be, I just lost my brain for a minute. Five, five rows per inch. Yeah. So if I have 15, I should be at three inches. No, I am at three and a half or two and a half. I'm at two and a half. So this one did not get gauged either. Did not get gauge on the knitting. Um, so, that's very interesting that those two are so close in fiber and the same weight. Yet, they worked up so differently. So even when I look at the yarn beside each other, it's very, very close to being the same thing. The same width and everything. So that's very, that's 
looks interesting, y'all, to me. All right. Let's see how this frogs. This is the Kobu. Frogs really well, which I imagined it would because it's pretty smooth yarn. Not so smooth that it is annoying to uh, knit with on my metal needles. Like that, uh, that one I did before that was very slick and hard to knit with. This does not want to come off of here, y'all. I don't understand. Everything else came off just fine. Why are you being so stanky? There we go. That one stitch got too tight. All right. Here is the knit, which comes out even easier than the crochet. Uh, get you over there. Now let's try out the cotton bamboo yarn. Um, yep, the knit comes out real easy. And crochet, final crochet one. There we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what I will say about this yarn, if you crochet with it, these are double crochets. It's going to be more see-through. Um, you could get a denser fabric. Like the bottom half of this was uh, single crochet. Um, so if you want something light and airy, it'll be great for crochet. If you would like a denser fabric, it's still kind of see-through, but it's makes a more solid fabric, I guess, with the knit. So there we go. That's the rest of the yarn that I had in that box. And this has gotten way longer. I'm going to have to cut and edit. So there's so much craziness going on. But yeah, so tell me what you think about these yarns down below. I will put links to all of these down below. Um, I'll also put a link to my handy dandy new gauge swatch, which I really like. I haven't tested out this thing for the crochet hooks yet, but so far I'm liking this little four inch square. Um, typically that's what you do when you do a gauge swatch. So highly useful. Um, I have an idea of what I'll be doing for projects for some of these. And I, like I said, I will be doing a blog post tomorrow. My blog post didn't go out till seven. So uh, seven on Friday. Uh, and have all the information down that I have gathered so far about these yarns and show the projects I have completed and in progress. And I will potentially list some projects that I am going to do with the yarns. So then you can see what I might be doing with the yarn. Plus line brand currently has a sale going on for 45% off of yarn and yarn kits. So it is O C T 45. Um, so yeah, if you really want some of it, now is a good time to try it, try it out and buy it. If it's something that looked like it would be interesting to you. The only one that I will certainly never ever buy again is this. <laughs> this turnstiles yarn. I just, I don't like it at all. I can't see myself wearing anything made out of this. Even though I will probably knit a hat with it. Because the knit was easier to do than the crochet in this yarn because this sticks to itself so bad. So, I don't know. Anybody else ever used this turnstiles? It's pretty bad. So, all right. I'm going to let y'all go. Uh, this probably won't go up till Friday anyway. And I have my blog post ready at the same time. I'll put them together. So, sorry about the lateness and the missed video this week. But it's not feeling that great. So, I am feeling better. Although, my voice is getting kind of rough because I've been talking so much. So, if you like this video give it a thumbs up think about subscribing um i do other reviews for things like this if there's something you'd like to see a review of or like me to do a review of just let me know down in the comments um i'll certainly check it out um i may have already checked it out so um just let me know um and that's it for this <laughs> review i'll see y'all next time bye